So let's start off with radical cystectomy as a group. We, I mean, we know uh, the, the morbidity and the possible mortality associated with the procedure is significant. Uh, it requires a learning curve, the surgical expertise that uh, we know that it's out there. And it's a combination of not only having local control, but also uh, distant and long-term oncology control is essential. Uh, and uh, discouragingly, within our, our, our residency programs, the average number of cystectomies and diversion done are actually four uh, by a graduating resident. That's the average number. Now, there are a number of institutions that are way on one end, but there are institutions where a graduating resident will have one cystectomy and diversion completed. And so you're talking about a very complicated procedure, one in which that has significant morbidities and issues with this. So the question is, is a robotic approach vis-a-vis -vis an open approach, does it have any impact in terms of outcomes, uh, eventually in terms of how things are being done? This is actually a, a recent slide looking at the National Cancer Database where almost 80% of cancer patients in the U.S. are actually uh, captured. And if you look at actually over time, the number of uh, robotic cystectomies have increased dramatically so that almost 40% now of cystectomies are done with a robotic approach. And interestingly enough, the robotic approach in this database, which is, is academic, it's private, it's a combination of all different types of centers, the majority of individuals who actually have lower number cystectomies done and in centers that are non-academic, a higher percentage of those are being done actually via robotic approach. And so if you look at different types of comparison points between the two different uh, types of approaches, these are the things that I think we should uh, focus on. So a lot of this data comes from a large meta-analysis that was completed a couple uh, years ago looking at a combination of both randomized controlled trials as well as prospective and retrospective studies looking at robotic approaches versus open approaches. Let's look at morbidity and complications. Specifically under that, complications, uh, the mortality and readmission risk. If you look at cystectomy, historically, if you look at the complication rate, 30 to 60 percent, um, mortality rate around 3 percent within the 30-day time period. Uh, at Vanderbilt, our, our complication rate for all comers is more than 40 percent within the 30-day time period, so one that has significant complications associated with it. And if you look at our readmission and our mortality rate, this is something that I tell our patients that our 90-day mortality rate, 90-day mortality rate is 7% associated with this procedure. Uh, so in uh, essence, the combination of morbidity, both short-term 30 days as well as within 90 days, this is quite significant. If you look at, I'll go back one, if you look at then complications is this meta-analysis looking at robotic versus open, Overall, looking at all these types of studies that were compared, there was actually a slight favor in terms of robotic versus open approach in terms of overall complications. But if you look at specific complications, there are some things that are more clearly advantageous, at least in this meta-analysis, for the robotic approach. And that would include less blood loss, fewer transfusions, and a slightly shorter length of stay. Now, importantly, this can be significantly impacted by the use of uh, ERAS protocols that, that Peter just discussed. And so, in essence, whether or not length of stay truly is caused by just this robotic approach, it's difficult to say. But I think the data regarding blood loss and transfusion loss is pretty clear. What about readmissions? Well, it, actually, this is a recent study uh, looking, again, actually within a specific large national U.S. health insurer and showed that there was actually no difference in readmission rate between the robotic and versus uh, an open approach. Uh, the majority of these were open, a smaller percentage were robotic. Uh, the length of stay was shorter for the robotic, but I think the key was that there was no difference then in the 30-day readmission rate, and there's no difference in the length of stay if those patients were readmitted. So in the, in the tabular form, if you look at the different causes for patients to be readmitted, there was no cause that was more likely to be associated with robotic versus open approach. And if you look at the length of stay, so somebody came back in after a robotic operation or after an open operation, how long they stayed after the readmission was actually no difference between the arms at all. So importantly, though, when you look at a robotic cystectomy, and that's just part of the procedure, you know, the vast majority of these trials are talking about a robotic approach with the removal of the bladder, and then you make an incision to do the diversion. None of them have really focused on the combination of both intracorporeal uh, reconstruction as well as removal of the bladder. So this is the robotic uh, cystectomy consortium. This is a large number of institutions that have gotten together to pool their data. 
they specifically looked at this, whether or not an intercorporeal approach would be more likely to have complications associated with the robotic approach. The majority of these, as you would uh, uh, imagine, would be ileocondrite, but they actually showed that there was no difference when it came in terms of operative time, complication rate, and reoperation rate. Now, you know, in, in truth, the fact that their operative time was really no different, I think, is the most impressive finding of this. But they said that, in fact, the only difference they saw was fewer GI complications when there was an intercorporeal approach used. Uh, there was a single series, a small one, looking at more well, recently uh, whether or not uh, there was a difference with a intercorporeal rate versus their open rate. This is based out of uh, England. And looking at their 90-day complication, their 90-day mortality rate, different types of diversions. And they found overall that there was no difference again between that. We talked about complications. What about the learning curve? Uh, Transitioning from an open approach to any robotic approach, I think, is quite difficult. And I think that was much more telling probably a decade ago. Um, but right now, there's really very little reporting and not published anything at all regarding the transition learning specifically regarding cystectomy. Um, and really now, the question is, is it easier now because of the prevalence of robotic prostatectomies? 90% of prostatectomies down are done robotically in the U.S. The vast majority of residency training programs, the number of open prostatectomies uh, that are actually performed by the residents is probably averages in the single digits. So if you look at the learning curve that was projected for an open radical cystectomy, the thought was, and these are guidelines for the SUO fellows, was that you should probably do at least 10 a year, um, that you should have a margin status less than 10% being positive, that you should do at least a standard pelvic lymph node dissection, and that you should at least get 10 to 14 nodes. These are totally made up minimum criteria, but it's an attempt to standardize in some way what should be done for the open uh, surgeon at the time of radical cystectomy. If you look at the robotic curve, there clearly is more experience gained over time. And these are slides, actually, I showed last year from, from Raj. They still haven't published this yet regarding the overall change in inflection points. So after a number of cases, you get actually a flat line in terms of blood loss. So with blood loss, after 20 or so of these robotic cystectomies, you didn't have less blood loss as a whole. In terms of operative time, it took a little bit longer to get more speedy on the robot. Uh, about 40 cases after that, actually your learning curve flattened out. If you looked at a lymph node count, similarly about 20 or so, once you did 20, your number of lymph nodes didn't necessarily increase or you didn't do a more complete lymph node dissection. So clearly you're earlier on in the procedure and your experience of curve, uh, the less likely you are to do a complete dissection, the longer it will take you, the more likely to have more blood loss. So how many robotic cystectomies really then need to be performed? This was a consensus panel a couple years ago of uh, robotic surgeons, uh, self-proclaimed experts, who, who basically say that you should do at least 20 to 30 before you feel you actually have some level of, of competence. And uh, they define actually the experienced uh, uh, surgeon, the very experienced surgeon, someone who's done more than 100 of these cystectomies and can then basically tackle these procedures that are more difficult, have an average blood loss of less than 300 cc's, able to do a complete lymphadenectomy as well as different types of diversions with an aim of length of say of five to 10 days. So again, self-proclaimed experts who basically say this is what you should be able to achieve once you get to more than 100 robotic removals. So what about cost? Uh, if you look at the cost of a robotic procedure versus an open procedure, I think as a whole, there's no debate that the robotic approach is going to be more expensive. To add up costs, you have the fixed cost of the robot itself, uh, and then you have the variable costs that really make a difference. The length of time within the operating room, importantly, the OR personnel used, as well as disposable equipments uh, that are required for the robotic approach as opposed to the open approach. And then you add on how long the patient stays. So it's a combination of both intraoperative variables as well as postoperative in hospital stay. So if you look at SEER data, and there are other institutional uh, trials looking at MSK uh, data, the robotic consortium data, have all basically cleared uh, or have stated that the OR time is a little bit longer, and as a result, the costs are actually a little bit higher. SEER data would actually show that similarly, that overall uh, for a robotic approach, it is, tends to be more expensive. But actually, as you go out over time, there doesn't seem to be as much a difference, but there continues to be a difference. 
So we talked about cost, we talked about the learning curve, we talked about morbidity and mortality. What about oncologic issues? Within oncologic issues, I think you have to determine lymphadenectomy. Is it important to go here by the bifurcation? Is it the common iliac artery, aortic bifurcation, all different levels of an extended lymph node dissection? I think those uh, folks that have seen uh, uh, surgeons that do a robotic approach, they're able to think adequately do a lymph node dissection. And actually, the folks at MD Anderson looked at lymph node dissection and going back in after a robotic dissection was done by an open surgeon. And the adequacy of the lymph node dissection, I think, is quite good up to the level of probably the common iliac artery. Uh, the dissection any higher is a little bit more difficult, nor has it been studied well. If you look at meta-analysis regarding lymph node yield, uh, the lymph node yield says that there's a slightly higher lymph node count with a robotic approach. Uh, in all honesty, it, I think the dissection in terms of the anatomic detail and the template, you're able to achieve, uh, achieve that robotically versus open, whether or not the lymph node count is higher or less, I think really doesn't make much difference. So under oncology, you have the adequacy of the lymph node dissection. Well, I mean, the, the nitty gritty is what about outcomes? What about cancer survival? This is a curve that uh, people have seen quite a bit regarding the USC series and historically how patients have done, depending upon if they had organ confined disease, disease that was extra vesicle, uh, or more extensive disease with lymph node involvement. So this curve basically shows you probability of not recurring or cancer free survival for a significant long period of time. The robotic curves uh, are not too dissimilar. This is a single institution series, very similar to the US series, but with much smaller numbers. This is from Roswell Park, showing a very similar curves in terms of outcomes at the five-year mark. These are not 10-year marks, these are not 15-year marks, but show similar outcomes for organ confined versus extravascular disease and for PT4 disease. Similarly, if you look at the robotic approach at Cornell, you would see a similar overall probability alive in terms of cancer-free rates with those patients that undergo robotic approach. If you look at SEER data, again, real-world data with, with uh, the, the both advantages and disadvantages of SEER data, but in terms of, of looking at overall robotic versus an open approach, there was actually no differences in cancer-specific survival at a follow-up of about four years. Um, so at this point, this is not head-to-head -head prospective data, but looking at single institution as well as large institutional databases, there seems to be no significant difference. I think there was a valid concern, and still in the back of my mind, there's still concern about atypical recurrences. Recurrences with a robotic approach or a laparoscopic approach, uh, where in which there are occurrences at locations that you normally do not see with an open approach. Uh, the folks that first actually uh, consider this, uh, people in Europe have mentioned this, as well as the people at Cornell, they were the ones who actually first published the possibility of about up to 10% of these atypical recurrences. They went back and actually looked at their data regarding who actually recurred, what sites and locations of disease, and they actually found that there was no specific predisposition for those patients that underwent a robotic approach versus an open approach, and that there were no differences in these uncommon locations. Now, everybody also has their anecdotal cases where uh, there was tumor spillage, where there were issues or concerns of there's something here that probably shouldn't have occurred. Is it published? No. Uh, do I think there are, are more atypical recurrences? I think definitely possibly if the surgery, just like any open surgery, isn't done carefully. Then overall, in terms of comparative effectiveness data from the same uh, SEER evaluation, Overall, the robotic approach tended to have patients had a shorter length of stay. They were more likely actually to be sicker, have more comorbidities, uh, and they needed more and longer home health evaluations and treatments afterwards, probably more likely due to their initial comorbidities as opposed to the approach. And there was no difference in major complications, respiratory complications, or ICU admissions. Uh, so in, in summary, I think um, the benefits of the robotic approach less blood loss, perhaps an impact on length of stay. I think really no difference in terms of lymph node yield or complications. Uh, in some ways equivalent, I don't think necessarily superior, and, and clearly I don't think worse. 
the negatives clearly are the OR time, the learning curve, and the costs. I, I think the OR time uh, uh, does improve with time. I think the costs improve with better efficiency. Uh, the learning curve is as similar to any learning curve with any procedure. Uh, the learning curve with an open cystectomy also requires time. The learning curve uh, with a robotic approach also takes time. Uh, but I think the the, the, the evolution of how we do things now robotically has made that learning curve easier. Now, what about outcomes? So two large trials. The MSKCC trial um, uh, is a single institution trial, randomized. Their primary endpoint was looking at actually complications. Uh, and what they found was is the robotic approach had a longer time, less blood loss, but no difference in complications, no difference in length of stay, no difference in surgical margins, uh, and no difference in quality of life. And so their conclusion was that there was no significant advantage of a robotic approach. There are some concerns with this trial, uh, caveats being in terms of the low overall enrollment uh, within this patients. Uh, the idea of, of comparing open surgery done for decades and decades at Memorial with a s single surgeon who had never done a robotic cystectomy prior to this trial. Um, blood transfusions were not included as a complication, just the blood loss was monitored, and the actual number of blood transfusions were significantly less in the robotic uh, arm. Uh, and the idea of of uh, the differential in, in, in the uh, time of the case may be associated with the extent of the lymph node dissection. Uh, the RAZOR trial. I think the RAZOR trial uh, is, is kind of the elephant in the room. Uh, the RAZOR trial is a large multi-institution trial funded by the government uh, looking specifically at a combination of complications and outcomes, but the primary outcome was basically uh, equivalence in terms of primary outcomes uh, in terms of cancer control. Uh, it's a non-inferior design, uh, and um, it was presented at the AUA um, this spring. It has not been published. And the findings this spring uh, was the fact that there was a significant higher positive surgical margin rate with a robotic arm compared to the open arm. All the other uh, outcome factors actually were not different. Um, I, I can tell you now, and that's why I'm not going to show a slide, there, are, there was a reevaluation of the data by the authors, uh, and it is currently in submission uh, at uh, a journal with reviews and revisions. Uh, so I can't tell you the final outcome in terms of the oncologic outcomes, uh, but uh, I, I, I'm still not sure what the final outcome of that trial is going to be until it's published. Uh, but importantly, I think that'll be very important in terms of, of the robotic approach versus the open approach. So what approach do I use? Uh, I do both. Uh, and I think the ongoing studies will be essential. Uh, if you ask me uh, how many cystectomies that I do open versus robotic, uh, probably 75% of cases now I do robotically as opposed to open for, for many different reasons. Uh, but all my urinary diversions are still done uh, with uh, uh, an extracorporeal approach. I've only done uh, probably 10 intercorporeal approaches.